Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today's Thursday. It's December 22nd. It's about 8, 11 in the morning, and the market's going to open up in about an hour and 19 minutes to be specific with you. Now, I warned you, I warned you beginning of the week, actually even might have been last week, that the market's going to have some exaggerated moves. The reason the market's having exaggerated moves is because there's a lot of retail traders who are bored and have nothing to do. Hey, Clyde. And there's a lot of algo traders right now who are taking advantage of the market's low volatility or low movement, not low volatility, low liquidity, and increasing the volatility due to the low liquidity levels. I think I've said it right. So you have less volume right now, and you have these participants who are moving the market around and are shaking regular retail investors out of positions and scaring them or making them very, very greedy, like the Dow going up 500 points yesterday while the, Dow, while the bond market goes up barely 0.26. That's not really very normal because usually when the bond market's been going down, it puts a lot of pressure on the stock market. Also, if you're looking at volatility, volatility is now back to the pre pre uh, exaggerated levels, which means I'm expecting more upside. Now, just so you guys understand, we've got, and I'll talk about this more when I do the review, but we've got a lot of stuff on the table. We've got the biggest report of the quarter, GDP, coming out. Then we've got jobless claims. Tomorrow, we've got durable goods, personal income, and new home sales and consumer sentiment, which will be very interesting to see because the consumer confidence was just off the charts. I think that's because the report or the consumer confidence survey came out right after the Fed said they're going to be slowing down and the their uh, the CPI and the PPI was went down. I think that's when this is this happened and people's confidence really went up. But uh, I'm not seeing too much confidence based on the bond market. The bond market doesn't lie. And the fact that the Dow Jones went up yesterday, five, what is it, five, six hundred points, and we only went up a quarter of a basis on the bond market, that's not a strong rally. And right now we're only up 18 ticks, and we're going to have a big, big report in 16 minutes, and there's not a lot of liquidity. So I'm expecting the market to subdue or trade a little bit lower. Um, I think we're going to erase some of the gains that we've seen. We may be in for a surprise, but I hardly doubt it. Also, I want to I want to point out something interesting. A lot of people have been asking me about the Christmas rally, the New Year's rally, and w whether we're going to have a Santa rally. Well, I'm going to tell you something about that. Typically, about 85% of the time, these rallies start with the small caps, and they start the last two weeks of December. They don't really start uh, the last few days of December. They start the last two weeks of December. And so far... I'm not seeing any type of a major rally out of uh, out of out of the stock market, especially the small caps. I mean, the small caps went up yesterday, but I mean, this 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 is not a big rally. This can be raced in one or two days, and we can come back lower. And matter of fact, we're near um, short term or medium term support level on the Russell, so I'm not expecting a lot of upside. Now let's talk about what to expect today and what's on the table, and we can go from there. Now you're going to see some earnings on CarMax and Paychex. Those are the two stocks that are coming up with earnings. I don't know if they're coming out before or after the close. And we're also seeing a slide in chip stocks already, which is not really healthy because chip semiconductors really drive tech. So the fact that Micron is down, the fact that LAM is down, both of stocks are down over 2% and Micron had bad earnings, that's not good. If you look at the entire SMH sector, which we'll look at right now, which was up two and a half percent yesterday, it's already it's already this morning lost half of that. So if semiconductors don't really, there's a lot of market cap there too. So if semiconductors don't really cause a rally and if we erase this, then what is what else is there? And then you have a gap right here at the 203, uh, 03 level that really should be filled and I think will be filled as soon as we pass the 50 day moving average, which is this blue line right here. Um, overall, I'm not that happy with what I'm seeing in the market, but let's talk a little bit about the pre-opening call, the briefing, what to expect, and we'll go from there. So three major indices rallied Wednesday, notching the biggest one-day percentage gain this month. Now, when you hear that and you know it's a holiday season, that's a red flag right there. Upbeat cor corporate earnings from Nike and FedEx, and by the way, Nike was really good, but FedEx earnings weren't all that great. And strong consumer confidence data soothed recession fears. Yeah, let's see how long that lasts. Wednesday's trading session, shares of Nike jumped 12%. That's quite a bit. And FedEx gained 3.4% after the company reported better than expected quarter results 
and announced plans to cut a further one billion in costs and a percentage of employees, which I don't think is a good positive sign. Wednesday's data showed that consumer confidence eased to an eighth month high in December as inflation retreated and labor market remained strong. Let's see how the GDP uh, plays into that today easing fears about a recession. However, U.S. existing home sales, which is a really, it's not what's going to happen, it's what's happening right now, dropped 7.7% to a two and a half year low, heard by higher mortgage rates, and that's gonna continue. Today, all eyes are focused on the GDP report. We're looking at a quarterly a rise of 2.9% compared to a loss of 0.6%. Investors are gonna focus on the GDP price index, which is was at 9.1%, they're looking at 4.3%. And also we have a jobless data. Jobless numbers have been absolutely fantastic. They've been stable. They've been holding around 200, 250,000. Not worried too much about that. Let's talk about Europe now. Europe is down slightly. Uh, participants are digesting latest growth data. Data from Britain's gross domestic product stood at negative 0.3% for the quarter and up 1.9% year over year, which is not all that bad, but weaker than the expected of 2.4% year over year. I'm not really concerned about the quarter. I'm looking at year over year. As the country's economy heads towards the recession the Bank of England signaled last month, and more, more uh, US CEOs are coming out with negative forward-looking statements. I believe uh, a big chip company uh, yesterday cut a big percentage of their workforce. I know that Micron also was part of that. China closed lower as uncertainty over Chinese economic reopening amid a surge of COVID infections continued to chip away at sentiment. That is not happiness. At the same time, investors face an increasing number of signals that Beijing plans a full scale back its strict, uh, strict zero COVID strategy by 2023. Well, let's see how it goes. Japan's stocks closed higher after the country's government revised its growth forecast on hopes of a higher business expenses and significant wage increases. I'd like to see that. And as I mentioned, uh, we've got earnings on PayX, on, that's Paychex and CarMax. will be interesting to see what their forward statements are. And don't expect a lot of uh, love from chip stocks. Both Lamb and Micron are down. And remember, chip stocks have a very, very strong correlation to overall tech stocks. And if tech stocks start going down, that's not good. This is the GDP report that's coming out in about 11 minutes. Now, looking at the bond market, and uh, I want to show you the bond market. And this is important because this has a bigger impact than anything. And remember, bonds is what drives stocks. We're up right now 20 ticks. But if you could see here yesterday, we went up like five, 600 points on the Dow. But look at where we're at. We're still down here. We still haven't really gone up. We haven't corrected anything. And I think we're going to hit this 50-day moving average sooner than later. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's still the 50-day moving average. I play with that number sometimes. I switch it to eight days sometimes. But I think this uh, market is going to go up. Now, if you look at the broad market, if you look at the Dow, I know, I know we went up 529 points yesterday. We rallied. But look at where we're at. We're just a few inches away from the 200-day moving average. This market, this 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 uh, this run up here happened after three down days. We had a huge, or no, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, like five down days. I'm expecting most of this to be erased and the market to start sinking down because there's just not a lot of major catalysts right now at the end of the year, and we're not seeing a great rally. I know FedEx and Nike were great, but. That's not the beginning and the end of the world. I think the GDP will be a lot more significant. So I'm expecting more downside. I would be surprised if the stock market went higher. And also when you look at the sectors, which we'll look at right now, I wanna show you something very meaningful. We, If you look at the sectors, healthcare, industrial, consumer staples, financial, energy, there's really nothing here to tell us. Uh, th there's nothing here that's speculative that's rallying. All of this is very, very defensive. And look, even, even uh, energies are starting to come back up. And I think they're going to come up just like consumer staples did. So I like these major sectors. But here's what I wanted to show you. Now, the market was up hard yesterday, right? So you're thinking there's a lot of stocks breaking out to a 20-day high, right? 30 stocks, 31 stocks. The market, basically what it's telling me, that the market basically went to fair value yesterday with that rise. It didn't even rally. 31 stocks made 20-day highs yesterday. So it could be the start of something. It's potential. I mean, I mean, I, we can't predict the future. I don't even have my crystal ball in this office. <laughs> That's, that was a joke. But, but my point is the market is just, 
is just evening out from going south for about five days. I'm not really seeing any major upside. So please, please be very, very, very cautious right now. And uh, don't let this, this little 500 point dinger think that the market's turning around. As we're below the 200 day moving average on the SPY. And even on the Dow Jones, while we're still above the 200 day moving average, I think those days are numbered. I think what's really holding up the Dow is it has a lot more defensive blue chip stocks, stocks that are in the following sectors. So let me show you. It doesn't have a big exposure to technology and communication services, healthcare, industrial, consumer staples. That's the Dow right here. So you're seeing the Dow rally. But if you strip all that away, and if you look at individual sectors, which we will look at right now, things are just not looking all that pretty. I mean, look at this. I mean, financials are looking pretty good. Energy is looking like it can go higher. Utilities I like, industrial I like, but look at look at look at uh, look at materials. It's got it, it's too far down to really rally up. Real estate doesn't look like it's got much to it. Consumer discretionary, which is Nike, which is Nike by the way, barely moved higher. So I would be very very cautious. I think the stocks that have minor pullbacks will recover, but the stocks that have sharp pullbacks are only gonna go a little bit higher and maybe come off. So be very careful and stay defensive. Energy stocks are still leading, believe it or not. And yesterday we got news that um, there was a short, there's gonna be another short, there's gonna be more shortages of energy in the USA. Uh, the, the US supplies are, 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 are shrinking, they're not increasing. So stay defensive and remember, there's not a lot of momentum internally in the market right now this is just a shakeout that 500 point move couldn't even make more than 31 stocks make 21 20 day breakout yesterday so it's not significant keep your eye on the gdp report and most importantly keep your eye on how the small caps and the bond market reacts in the next couple of days if the bond market can't rally if the bond market keeps going down that's putting more pressure on stocks no matter what happens so you've got to be very 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 careful the big report is coming out in six minutes now here's the thing regardless of the market's going to go up or down we're going to have a lot of volatility and because of that there's an important number that every trader needs to know it's called the velocity strength number vsn and trading becomes much easier when you know this number it's like a compass now my research shows that when the vsn closes below 0 0.1 that's an optimal time to enter a trade but guess what when the vs vsn number that's called velocity strength number goes above 0 0.9 it's a good idea to close the trade or fade a stock and sell short now if that sounds like a number that you'd like to know i urge you to click the link below and I can show you how you can easily chart it on any stock. Actually, commodities, stocks, gold, bonds, it works on a lot of assets, mostly mean reverting assets. And I, I have a video in the members area showing you which assets are mean reverting. Very excited about this indicator. Now, most folks don't realize these numbers exist. And they're not based on some 40-year-old indicators that haven't worked in 30 years, okay? let alone this is important stuff people don't realize how important it is i even built an entire indicator around that number get the details now click the link below check out my vsn velocity strength number and how it can help you become a better trader in this crazy volatile market now remember technical indicators thrive overbought oversold indicators thrive when markets are moving and guess what markets are moving don't let this volatility distort the broad view markets i mean we know we had a great report but nike is not the broad market okay it doesn't even have all that mar much market cap and fedex didn't their statement wasn't all that great i think market just wanted to come up and recover uh, i think uh 17 higher revenue in nike is not going to cause the market to turn around and go bullish but it's a good sign let's watch this week's data you've got gdp jobless claims durable goods personal income new home sales and then let's see how the market reacts to all of that Keep your eye on the bond market. Follow the link below. Learn about my VSN number. Now, I want you guys to post comments in my YouTube WealthPress channel where you can find this video and this link if you can't find it on the WealthPress website. Also, subscribe to our Telegram channel. The instructions are below. And post some love letters for me. It's the holidays. I'm lonely. I haven't heard from you in a long time. I'm going to start crying. No, I'm just kidding. You guys have a great, great weekend. I'm going to go play with Clyde. Maybe Bonnie, too, if he behaves himself. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a great, great day.